32nd board is up, Chris, which means, oh, and it's sideways. We're going racing in less than 10 seconds. This is going to be madness. This first corner is going to be so crucial. The guy who gets out in front, clean line coming up. Watch for the number two to control the inside. Tucks it in tight, keeps it clean. And we have we have a tight battle here. Hoyer's going to be in the second position. Hefner goes around him. Hefner, Hoyer. The number 44, Hefner. He is in control. Oh, look into the inside. We talked to a number of the athletes, and they said that inside line at times can be a little greasy with the ice underneath. Wow, Nolan was so fast in seating, and man, Brock is just, he's on him right here. This corner was, this is where you're going to see the passing. These guys are coming in so fast, you got a little hip jump, and then charging out of the corner up to the top. Hebner uh, taking the inside line, trying to protect. You saw Hoyer go to the outside. We have the yellow flag over the big jump. They're going to check up. And tight battle going into this big bottom bowl turn. The differences between riding. Oh, oh and Hefner, Hefner while leading down. goes down, he tries to go to the inside, and he wedges. Looks like he found a soft spot there in that berm. We knew that top, that lower berm was going to be an issue because with so many bikes, we haven't had 15 bikes on the course at one time, so we know the course is going to break down. And we have, I mean, this is lap four of 30. Hefner, of course, won the qualifier as we talked about. Now we're going to have to see what kind of charge he can mount after wedging and going down. But once again, it's the number two, Hoyer in front. He was the favorite coming in. He has been one of the really driving forces in the sport. His backcountry videos have really driven a lot of these athletes to become a part of this. And this is totally opposite the backcountry. Explain a little bit about the, the birth and the style of that backcountry versus this racing. Well, the, the awesome thing about backcountry is, I mean, there's no limits, but you get a feel for the machine. I think the biggest advantage that Hoyer has, I mean, he has just a ton of bike experience. He's the 2009 Canadian Arena Cross Champion. He knows about going fast. Second in, sitting in second place right now is Cody Matichuk. He was your second fast qualifier. And when we watched Matichuk ride, he was really hauling the mail, but there's a pretty big gap back now from first to second as we see Matichuk go by on the 111. It'll be interesting now that we're starting to get the field spread out a little bit. I look for like the guys like Alfredo Gomez, who've got a lot of endurance to start picking their way through the field. But looking at uh, number third or in the third place, Axel Hodges, he ha has a lot of raw speed as well. As they come across the stripe, lap seven, Hodges still sitting in that bronze medal position. It's Colton Haker sitting in fourth. And the question here, as they get into the further along in the laps, the training, Haker for sure has the training. Um, we've seen it in a number of the di different disciplines he competes in, but everybody's saying the same thing about Hoyer, that pure moto skill, has the training, has the ability. We talked to him, ooh, a little dab there for Hoyer, but we, we talked to him, and he felt super confident in the training. He's Huge actually, commitment. Yeah, Hoyer actually has passed on a couple races this season just to prepare for X Games. His training, his regimen, and his bike setup are really on point. And I think there were some good mind games in that too, not showing up to a couple of events leading into the X Games. A lot of people are at, a lot of the competitors are probably wondering, well, what's going on? Why isn't he here? And, uh, you see a lot of lap traffic having to deal with that, and we're only getting into lap number 10. Well, as we're getting into the lap traffic, it looks like Matichuk has closed the gap by almost a second already to Hoyer. Again, Hoyer there on number two, blue uh, bike, Yamaha with the yellow and black gear. And uh, eating snow, not a fun thing to do, especially going up to the lip of those jumps. And he's having to make his way by going, it's oh, always he down. Goes down. Now the leader is down, and we'll see. It looks like Matichuk going around the outside right there. So Hoyer wedges on the bottom going around a lapper, and Hodges is right there behind him now. So this is going to open up the battle. Matichuk to the lead on the 111. Wow, he's so lucky not to stall the bike there. Able to pull in the clutch as he went down. Pretty cool and collected as he was able to get his bike back up, and he's charging now. He's not too far behind Matichuk. Less than a second behind Matichuk, and you see Hoyer. Matichuk, the red gear with the blue 
Uh, bike there, the number 111. Hoyer right behind. There's a lapper right there in the middle. This will be. This is going to develop, I think, with uh, the confidence that Hoyer has, and knowing uh, he was the fastest qualifier. Although Matichuk was right there, I think the confidence is there for Hoyer to make that charge. Wow, those corners are just getting so chewed up. You can see Matichuk took the inside. Oh, oh, another rider down. Rider down as Matichuk goes to the inside. We'll see if Hoyer is able to get through there cleanly. Hoyer was right behind that. He is clean oh. by. And contact for Matichuk. Matichuk is off with the course. Here comes Hoyer. A lot to deal with. We're not even halfway through. Looks like the number 62 of Cody Thompson. He was the one who got into. And the leader splitting him or a couple of different. Uh, Oh, Matichuk breaks traction, looks behind him. You may not even know the Hoyer's right on the inside. This is the battle for the lead, the red gear, Matichuk. The fluorescent yellow and black, that is Hoyer. That is the battle for first and second. It really looks like in these turns, the flat portion of the corner is getting icy. The snow, oh, Matichuk almost high sides it. The lap traffic is making these guys take different lines, and that's what is just mixing all of this up. Here we go. Matichuk for the lead. No, what not to be. And working by the 317 there. Again, Matichuk and Hoyer racing strong out front. Hodges still setting in third. I think the key for Brock right now is he just needs to be smart. I mean, we're only halfway through. Don't make any more mistakes. Be smart. Re oh, oh stalls Matichuk stalls the bike. A mistake for Matichuk. And Hoyer to the front, clean. Now, I think he may have learned his lesson. Keep it clean, keep it smooth. But the problem is you can't always see the lines when you're lapping people. And of course, the track is changing each time around. Trying to pick the smooth line around. Hoyer, 29 years of age. Looks like we've got Axel Hodges in second. Colton Haker again talking about endurance. Colton, this could be where he starts making his way through the field. And, and especially with lap traffic, uh, Colton can be really aggressive. And here's the battle for second. So there you have it, Hoyer. Huge gap as we look back. Oh, oh Hodges. Hodges blowing the corner. Oh, and Haker. Both have a problem there. So, award the all green, the Cowie with the black gear. That is Axel Hodges. And aboard the Husqvarna, the white bike, directly behind, that is Haker. And we'll see how that tightens up as your leader goes through this bottom bowl turn. Man, those turns look fun, don't they? It looks like you could just get on there. They're, these guys are holding it wide open. It's like they're surfing on the snow. Hodges with some breathing room. Haker a bit back now. But that is your battle for the top three right now. In fourth, the 42 of Scott. The training really going to pay off here. Now look at Hoyer has to deal with three riders. Three lap riders right in front of him, and what that does is it makes the vision super tough. Talk about that snow dust, Chris. Yeah, the snow dust, in, and I mean, these guys are getting pelted not only in the face, but also the hands. And you know, the hands are everything you have for control, throttle and brake. That's what's different about a snow bike as well, is on a typical bike, you have a brake on your foot and your hand. With a snow bike, obviously, since you don't have a front tire, you only have one brake lever, and it's up on your hand. <laughs> when I first rode it the other day with you, I was worried about grabbing that brake, even though I knew it was the back, because my mind was like, I'm going to grab the front brake, I'm going to go down. It is definitely different. Waiting for that battle for a second. Looks like Hager might have had some problems. He was right up on Hodges. The leader, Brock Hoyer, wow, the number two. Sending it off that jump. He is lapped up to sixth position. And a uh, great little note from research here in Colin. He says that the uh, number two looks like another great number two dominating right now. 
the king, Jeremy McGrath, of course. And when I talked to Hoyer, he said, I asked him, why do you run the number two? I was kind of thinking the McGrath connection. He said, well, that was the number that was on my first ever bike. And also, I'm a huge McGrath fan. And uh, I just love the number, so that, that's the number that I ride. I can find seeing the old Jeremy McGrath out on a snow bike. Man. You just called him old. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> love to have MC out here for sure. Uh, great champion. And right now, Hoyer, oh, seemed like a little bit of a stutter there for Hoyer. I think, I mean, this lap tra traffic, you can see the number three, Paris Hazinga behind him just ducking through the roost. It's just, you're coming into these faces of these jumps blind. Going around the outside. Man, he has done some amazing passing. Looks smooth and clean. Yellow flag. You got a rider. Oh, that, that's down. Axel Hodges. It looks like down. Axel Hodges. He is now down. Haker has gone to second position. And Haker, a long way back from Hoyer. It would take a big mistake from Hoyer. As we're six laps from the checkered flag and handing out a gold medal here at the first time ever snow bike cross. Pretty incredible to think that Brock Hoyer dumped his bike, fell down in this exact corner right here, was able to get up, not stall the bike, and, and come back to the lead. And Hodges has not been able to get his bike refired, so he's gone two laps down now to Hoyer. So for sure he will not be able to remount a charge to get back to podium position. And Right now, that bronze medal position is Matichuk, who we saw earlier going so quick, had a problem, actually stalled his, his bike as well. We're looking for second place, and we're going back quite a ways here. And still, Haker hasn't come through that shot. There's Haker there. Wow. <laughs> I can't imagine riding through that. Hoyer. Really having to battle, and at this point, being smart and safe getting through the lappers. Now, he doesn't know how much of a cushion he has, but he knows he has a cushion. We've seen him looking back to try to check and see who's around or where the competition is. And that, that's what's so tough in a field as big as this with a course that's going to get deteriorated as fast as it is, is you don't know, is my competition right behind me? Do I need to charge? Can I lay up? I mean, you can't see behind you. And Brock is doing the smart thing. He's charging forward. He's riding his pace. And um, luckily for him, his pace is ridiculously fast. Ridiculous. And we'll see when Haker comes around for timing and scoring to see. Yeah, it's, it's gone back to that full 10 second mark for Haker. You know, when I watch Brock ride, I mean, he looks so comfortable on the bike. You can tell that he spends a ton of time on this setup. He's one of the few riders scrubbing jumps and just being able to really rally the corners. Well, he was the favorite. He looked dominant. He qualified the fastest. And right now he is oh, 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 almost making contact there. But right now he is putting on a clinic. This is a school lesson for everybody else when it comes to snow bike cross with a 10 second lead as he comes in to that big tabletop jump. Whoa! Whoa! He had to do some work there. You can see he's moved his line to the outside where he had some troubles on the inside. It really seems like the snow is getting pushed out and the corners are getting a little icy on the inside. Right there you can see him break traction. And really having to work to keep it clean, getting around so many different riders. The thing you got to remember is the, the lapped riders have been battling with some you know, riders back in their position. Whoa. And Regan Sieg waving as say, go on by. And white flag is out as he splits two competitors. He's trying to keep it clean as Hoyer is on that glory lap. Keep it clean here. One corner to go, and he'll be facing that big tabletop. First time ever, Snow Bike Cross comes to the X Games here in Aspen, and Brock Hoyer, as predicted, the favorite comes in. Yes. <laughs> he is stoked. What a race by Brock Hoyer. For him to go down, keep his composure, keep his bike going, and get back around Matichuk, that is impressive. Locking in that silver position will be Colton Haker, the Enduro Cross star. And then Cody Matichuk.
the obligatory goggles into the crowd. And there it is, your medalist in gold, Brock Hoyer, silver, Colton Haker, and in bronze, Cody Matichuk. Stellar performance, and, and when you think about it, Chris, I mean, yes, he had a tip over, but he rode so clean that entire race with so, many, so much lap traffic to have to battle through. You